So let's go back to the pivot service and let's take this to the next step. So now I've actually created a pivot grid using the wizard or essentially a model. If I go to the pivot grid viewer and let's actually create a brand new or actually set define that on top of the one that I just created. So if I pick up my pivot grid name, ABTS voucher info one, and now if I click search, see that that's showing up there. And I can pull this up and there's the data. So again, I can go in here and if I want to make a few changes, so if I actually decided, you know what, let's try this, uh, maybe this one right here and see what we've got. And let's actually switch this so that putting this here and we're going to put this here, um, which really isn't that interesting, but uh, again, just to show some changes, and then I can change my grid as type as well, or my chart type. So I'll go in here. Um, again, I'll just do, let's do a horizontal bar chart just to show something different. So now I've created this one as well. And you'll notice I can save this layout on top of that model. So there's my layout. So I've now created this. Um, and now I can use it. Now, one of the things that I, that uh, that uh, in in, a, in, a, in the portal. So, if I go in here, let's move back up, and let's actually uh, uh, go through it and start using that. So, I'll go to the People Tools menu. People Tools, and we'll go to Portal. And we'll go to Pagelet Wizard. And so we'll create a new one. And so we'll just go through do some steps here. So we'll pick uh, Pivot Grid as the source of this pagelet. And since I only have a few Pivot Grids in this environment, let's pick uh, this new one that I've got here. Go to Next. And so I can go in and you know, change some values and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, let's just get all the way through this wizard. Um, and so I've gone through all of that, uh, and then if I wanted to, I could actually put this on my home page. So let's say that this, so let's put this under accounts payable, since that's really where the data is related to, maybe make it embeddable, let's save that. Now, one of the things that you can do is that because query underlies the uh, the uh, you know the the, the pivot grid, um, all of the row level security that's driven off of uh, query actually comes along for the ride. So, what that means is that um, you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of time worrying about how I prop for things in the query or defining filters or that sort of thing. You can actually have that um, as part of just the natural filtering that occurs with that security hook that exists with that. We've talked about that in a few other uh, webinars as well. So now that I've gone through and saved this, uh, I'll click finish here. Let's actually return back to home and let's go to personalized content and let's go to accounts payable. And we should be able to see, let's see. So did it not show up there? Let's see. Oh, I put it there. There it is, accounts payable. So this is the test pivot grid that I actually uh, that I actually just created. So now if I actually put save here and Customize the layout, so we'll go through, and this is the one, uh, let's see, where's the one that's created? I may have picked the wrong one. 
But you can actually see this is another one that I created off of the same query. It has all of that data, and I can put it on my home page, and I can do other things with that as well. So again, you know, it provides uh, some nice, easy ways to do that. The thing is, it's very easy to create these pivot grids in ways that uh, the data isn't very easy to understand or to see. So that's just something to keep in mind as you create them, is that you really want to pay attention to the queries that you're creating and let make sure that the query data is, is looking the way you want it to. The nice thing is you don't have to go through and um, and put props on your queries to do filtering and that sort of thing. The Pivot Grid service will automatically apply filters to um, the data as it selects it out from the query. So, uh, so anyway, that's uh, that's the main thing I wanted to do from there. I know we're coming up on the hour. Um, so, Chris, I know that we had a couple of polls. I figured, you know, since we have the opportunity before the question and answer, and you know, before we kind of go through the last couple of uh, couple of items on this. Um, just to get a little bit of feedback from the customer. So I think I'll hand things over to you. Okay, great. So um, we had uh, just uh, two two quick ones here, and hopefully these will be things that people will uh, be able to help help uh, share some information. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll launch this poll here. So we'll keep this up for 45 seconds or so, um, and then we'll share the results with everyone so you can see, uh, you know, kind of get a feel for this. So what this is looking for is just kind of, you know, where people are with People Tools 852. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be surprised if anyone fesses up to being live. Uh, we'll have to, uh, anybody that claims that they're live, we'll have to come and check your your systems and be, be sure. But, um, I think it's uh, it's always good to know kind of where people are in terms of upgrading when you're doing your own upgrade planning, so you can kind of get a good feel for you know are all the uh, all the uh, incidents shaken out and things like that, or are you going to be uh, trailblazing? So we've got uh, about two thirds of you have voted so far, so we'll give it another uh, ten seconds. So. Vote early, vote often, uh, as they say. And why don't we go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and close the poll here. So we got. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll share the results here. So as you can see, we've got. Uh, well, we do have uh, people live there. We'll have to. Uh, that's uh, that's good to hear. So that is uh, excellent. Um, and there are uh, some other active uh, plans going on, so a fair fair chunk, but looks like uh, you know probably about uh, almost three fourths of the folks that are are just kind of uh, you know starting off the new year and thinking about eight five two now. So that's great that uh, that you're able to uh, to tune in. Um, we will, uh, like Larry mentioned earlier, we'll you know we'll be doing more follow-up sessions and kind of deeper dives, and um, you know in some cases um, you know topics that we've covered before, like troubleshooting and things like that, and the test framework, um, and updating those for People Tools 852. So um, those should uh, should be uh, useful for folks. Now, one of the other things we wanted to uh, to uh, get people's opinions on real quick here. Um, this is related to um, you know a lot of cases it's it's you know it's great that uh, the people tools team is able to go through and have all of the you know these features and things and that you can you know in, in you know in the general case be able to upgrade your current applications to the most recent people tools releases but in a lot of cases you know you see new features that are added in people tools and until you know some people go through and start actively using them um, in their own work, other people kind of wait until they get up to an application that's delivering these. So we wanted to get a feel for you know what things that you know out of what you know new new major features that have been delivered, what things are people really using and taking advantage of, and you can select multiple choices here. So um, we'll uh, we'll give it a few more seconds here, let people get a chance to vote. And why don't we go ahead and uh, we'll 
close this one off here. Five, four, three, two, one. And let's go ahead and share the results here. So this is interesting. So we've got a you know a fairly uh, a much broader mix here of things that people are taking advantage of. So um, you know obviously you know there's no single feature that has turned into something that you know everyone is uh, is going out and adopting, um, but a fairly broad mix. So that's good to uh, good to see there. Um, now. Those were the the two polls that we wanted to uh, to to uh, kind of go through and uh, and quiz people on, get some get some feedback on. Um, there are some other things to go through, and um, we'll kind of open things up for for questions here of you know whatever random questions you have that you want to throw out here, and, and uh, uh, you know obviously for folks that are going to drop off at the top of the hour, that's fine. Uh, we'll keep it going for a little bit longer here. Um, and then, um, but there are a couple other things in terms of, uh, I guess, you know, sort of feature function things that have been added in People Tools 8.5.2 um, that are, are worth talking about um, that uh, as we kind of wait to see what kind of questions people want to chime in with. Um, one of them is, uh, is going through and just the whole, you know, sort of uptake of additional Oracle technology. Um, this is something that, um, in a lot of ways, that um, uh, you know, is really good to see. Um, there's a lot of activity that's gone on around looking at, for example, uh, one of the products that Oracle acquired, uh, or a company uh, called uh, uh, Coherence, uh, uh, and that's now supported in People Tools 852. And what it does is provides a way to have session, you know, the web server session replication between a cluster of web servers. Um, that's something, and we have not gone through and installed that and kicked the tires on that yet to uh, to really you know shake that out. But that is a supported feature now to go through and you know for folks that are looking at you know running fault tolerant environments and you know minimizing any downtime for people, um, that uh, you know that's a, a a very good thing. There's also been more work around uh, People Tools 851 had uh, some initial support for the, uh, the Oracle uh, Data Guard, um, being able to do some uh, some things of having them fall over, uh, you know, back to a, a standby server. You could go through and configure that in the PS Admin uh, for you know what was the connectivity for that. So that's been extended to uh, to cover more different cases within PeopleSoft. You can start picking even specific components and services now that are okay to fall back to, uh, you know, essentially a a, a backup database um, uh, to go through and and uh, have that working. So um, there's a few other ones here. Why don't we go ahead and uh, let's get a few questions going here. Kevin, did you uh, you want to uh, are there any questions that are are worth tossing out here. Yeah, we have a good question concerning the pivot grid, uh, whether or not it's a managed object and kind of be compared and migrated like other managed objects. Yeah, so the answer to that is, is yes, uh, it is. In fact, if we were to go over to App Designer here, and uh, if I go into Insert Definitions, you should see I thought you should see. I guess you don't see the pivot grid. I think uh, it may be part of. I'll have to come back on this because I thought I had read that, but I don't see it in here anywhere. So uh, let me let me get back with that because I was pretty sure that I had seen that, and uh, now that I see what I can insert in here, I do not see that. So. Uh, why don't we, uh, uh, so in the meantime, is there another question, Kevin, that we can cover? Um, yeah, there was a general question on whether or not uh, there was any significant envision changes. 